Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Cressum, and I would like to welcome you to this conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. Uh, my apologies for last week when I was in uh, Yosemite National Park. Um, they do have a 3G network, but evidently uh, the server they were they were using was didn't have the capacity to 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 manifest Skype, and this is how I am reaching you today is via Skype here in Santa Rosa. So I want to thank uh, Amelia Centara and Fashji and Rosemary and, and, and Eileen and other, other people who part, participated in the show uh, last week, and I want to, you know, I want to give a, a special thank you to Amelia, uh, you know, who, who covered covered for me when I couldn't couldn't get online or couldn't get the Skype working. So thank you to everyone for that. Uh, this this program will also be about the metabolism and the Kundalini. Uh, but first, I would like to to uh, say thank you to everybody who's logging in to the chat room now. Chat room: uh, Eileen, Fashji, and some guests two two six eight and two three two one. If there is a uh, a question that you have about your kundalini awakening experience feel free to call in at 347-934-0026 and I'll be repeating that throughout the program I would like to thank uh, Amelia Centara and her family in the kingdom of Kerry in the country of Ireland for sponsoring this program so that people can learn more about their kundalini and maybe uh, handle it a little better then, then maybe they have previous or, or a nice addendum to the information that they've already uh, experienced for themselves. I would like to thank uh, the listeners in the archives, the future listeners, uh, as uh, you also drive this program with your questions and comments and, and attentiveness as you, as you listen in the future. So hello and thank you to you. I would also like to let you know that... Uh, uh, Glenn Ola has put together this uh, uh, the uh, Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com website, and uh, that is the address Kundalini Awakening Systems the number one dot com all one word, and uh, go ahead and type that into Google and that will that will bring it up pretty quick. Uh, you can also uh, see some of the videos on YouTube, and that would be under Chrisum dot Kundalini. If you search in the YouTube channel search window there, Kundalini will bring up all the uh, the videos. We have about a little shy of 300, I think, somewhere around 270 some odd uh, videos. So there's some uh, some other areas, and then um, I believe Santara has some announcements she would like to make. Santara. Hello, Chris. Good, good evening, everybody. Um, it's good to hear you, Chris. And you're coming in loud and clear. And John is listening next door, and he has told me, as indeed has Eileen. So that's great. Um, okay, so as usual, I want to give the web address that you can go to if you would like to uh, support Chris with a donation. And that website is www.ascension hyphen kundalini.blogspot.com um, but also I would like to uh, read something, paraphrase something um, about Chrism um, Chrism is another person like you, another person like me, a consciousness clothed in flesh. He does not claim knowledge of the writings or activities of any ancient lineage or sacred text but what he does claim is the information received is gifted to him by the expanded awareness of the Kundalini. He is a person without social portfolio. He lives in the USA and he works among the masses. He teaches the Kundalini and he activates those who are clearly ready. He radiates Kundalini and it radiates through him. And as it moves through him, it will also move through us as well. So what he writes is, is another option on your path, the option of a friend and a brother, another traveler up the mountain. 
and what he he writes comes from his own experience and what he is able to perceive via the Kundalini. He comes from a place of disciplined love and disciplined intention. He knows that may sound hard, but it's actually quite easy and very flexing within the parameters of forgiveness, helpfulness, kindness, tolerance, understanding, trust, surrender, service to others, evolution, and of course love. These are the the protocols of the safeties. So again, I would like to give the website if you would like to make a donation to CRISM and this work that he does. And the website is www.ascension-kundalini.com blogspot.com Thank you, Chrism. Thank you. Thank you, Amelia. Uh, Just so you know that Amelia uh, is planning more seminars. Uh, We're looking at uh, the the country of Ireland. Again, we haven't... uh, I think we're looking at the city of Cork and we're also looking at the uh, New York state, uh, possibly New York City as well. And if you have any feedback about where you might like to see a seminar come up, then uh, feel free to to contact Amelia Centara at kundaliniMatters at gmail.com. So today's conversation is about metabolism. And um, metabolism, you know, is a is a Greek word and and it really means you know, it means change or or uh, outgrow. Um, you know, these are these are life-sustaining chemical transformations within the cells of living organisms. But within a Kundalini context, it's not so much uh, the cells that are being you know that are having me- me- metabolized uh, activities. It's the Kundalini that is metabolizing the body. The Kundalini is changing the body into different kinds of energy and uh you know metabolism is 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 typically divided into two ways uh catabolism uh which breaks down organic matter and and uh takes the energy by way of cellular respiration and and then anabolism which uses the energy uh to to make components of cells like proteins, nucleic acids, things of that nature. Uh, the kundalini is doing a very, very similar process to the individual. The kundalini is changing the structure of the cells, but more importantly, it's changing the energetic uh, load and, the, and the, the characteristics of metabolism that each cell is having. And this, this will have a great effect upon how your energy, how your energy levels are, uh, whether whether you're collecting fat, whether you're collecting muscle, you know where the balances are, you know within the body, uh, how this will manifest uh, as a feeling or as a as a uh, as a cycle of of change that's being given to the body by the Kundalini, and so. Uh, Kundalini will go right into each cell of the body. Nothing is skipped. Nothing is is uh, ignored. Every cell of the human system, uh, whether it's a nerve cell or a brain cell or a blood cell or a white blood cell or a bone cell, skin cell, hair cell, even you know the the eyes the, and the cones of the eyes are all affected by the Kundalini. And when, when the Kundalini infuses, it begins a process of, of matter conversion, which is very similar to, to what the cells would normally do. Yeah, yeah, I want you to remember that the human body is a template for Kundalini. It's not that all of a sudden Kundalini comes and everything is, is, uh, is wildly different, even though that is true to a large degree but what i'm saying is that the human body is naturally wired to have the kundalini come in and so the cells know what to do they're not as surprised as the human ego is surprised at the many different changes uh that can occur uh during the uh the awakening process of an individual 
the cells of the body are going, oh, yeah, yeah, we know about this. Here, there's some code right there in our DNA that that the uh, science would enjoys calling junk DNA because they don't know what it does, and so they call it junk DNA, typical. But this uh, this junk DNA knows exactly what to do with regards to uh, the transformation that is occurring through the kundalini process on the human system. Uh, the energy requirements of the body, whether it's it occurs through catabolism or anabolism, uh, both of those systems will be altered. So the whole metabolism of the individual will be altered. I know many people, you know, look at at metabolism as just, well, geez, you know, how how fast do I process food? How fast do I lose weight? You know, do I get hungry faster than the next person? Do I need to eat six meals instead of three meals and, you know, et cetera, et cetera, and so forth? And this is true as well. This is this is this has a lot to do with the energy conversion that we take from food. But what what is stepped up with the kundalini are those two those two uh, metabolistic categories, the catabolism and the anabolism. But also the kundalini itself will begin to harvest life force properties from the food that is taken. Uh, of its own, it, because the body is being changed, the cells are being changed, so are the mechanics and, and even the, the, the physical structures of the cells also being altered. Um, and this affects energetic ener- energy levels within the system, within your body. This, is, this will affect your sleep levels. This will affect your cogency levels. This will affect your immune response levels. All of these things will be affected by the way the kundalini is is uh, adjusting the metabolism of the individual. So one thing I I really want you to pay attention to in this conversation is how you feel. Do you feel hungry? Do you feel? Uh, did you just have a big lunch? Well, <laughs> did you have a a midday meal? And you know, is that still with you? How is is your body metabolizing the food to to harvest nutrients from it in order to uh, to assist you in living your life? And for those of you that have kundalini, how has that changed for you? And if you want to call in at three four seven nine three four zero zero two six, you can let us all know how that has changed for you. Uh, it's important to note that. Not everybody is going to be the same with regards to the uh, the metabolism changes that the Kundalini will bring. Uh, Amelia Santara, you know, she may get very, very tired, very, very lethargic. Uh, Chrisom, he may get very, very excitable and and need to go out and and uh, do some hard work or play some sport or do some exercise, something that matches the metabolism characteristic that the kundalini is is spiking through the body. Uh, or vice versa, you know, Amelia can get really excited and, and Kristen can get very lethargic. These things will come as a sine wave, which is another scientific way of, of talking about peaks and valleys uh, within the experience of a person uh, having the kundalini or having a, a uh, metabolism shifts that the kundalini will bring. Uh, these metabolism shifts will, of course, uh, be contingent with uh, the the amount of adrenaline that's in the bloodstream, and and uh, you know, are the kidneys being affected at this stage of your kundalini? Are the adrenals being affected by this stage of your kundalini? And if so, what is that doing to the metabolism of of energy in your body? And so, of course, uh, be, because the fight or flee response is is uh, associated with the first chakra, the second chakra, and and uh, is 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 there to be to kick in for us at at, at an instant's notice uh, if danger is presenting itself. Well, then that will that will override a lot of other systems of of the uh, metabolic process within the person. However, with Kundalini, Kundalini will begin the hyperexpression of of uh, adrenaline into the bloodstream through the the adrenals through the hyperexpressive 
uh, activity of the adrenals, when, when the kundalini comes up to your adrenal glands, the adrenal glands will begin to pump out more of the adrenaline into the bloodstream. And this can make a person very nervous, which can also begin to hypermetabolize the food uh, that's, that's stored in the cells, but is also uh, being harvested from the food that the person has within themselves. And so you can see that a whole a whole world of change is occurring when the kundalini comes into the picture and begins to co-opt processes that the body, uh, for the most part, has has been using of its own accord, you know, basically waiting for the kundalini to come. And that is for those who who are going to have the kundalini no matter what, or they already have it. Well, the the body knows. Body knows and did know even before the consciousness of the person knew that the kundalini was going to come and was going to make those changes. Now, with regards to your sleep, you know, I get a few uh, emails uh, these days about people with their sleep, and um, yes, this has this has to do with some of the metabolism uh, effects that that a person may have. If you are are fasting, if you you know like a, a seven day fast can can really bring a person uh, quite a ways into the areas of lipidosis. Lipidosis is a fancy scientific term for saying consuming your own fat. The body is consuming its own fat because no external uh, sources of food are coming in to the body, and so. Uh, you know, in order to to make it really clear for us lay people, the the um, medical people said, well, we'll just call that lipidosis. <laughs> just in case any of you uh, were in the dark about that, that's the uh, the body consuming its own fat. A seven day fast will bring you into that, and that will also have levels of agitation um, uh, attached to it because the metabolism of the body is being interrupted. Well, with Kundalini. It's not so much of an interruption as it is a being completely taken over. <laughs> I I refuse to wor- to use the word hijacked, but the the kundalini, being of a divine source, will come in and begin to to bring the cells into their uh, shall we say uh, expanded. Uh, activities as the kundalini brings their change upon the cells well the cells and the energy that they produce in the body and the and the mechanism of energy production within the body also get changed and so this is how you know if the kundalini wants you to stay awake for 36 hours it's not a problem it's not a problem because the kundalini is is changing the person to be able to have and hold a, a specific uh, level of attention and awareness for a certain amount of time, uh, the kundalini is able to co-opt those energetic reserves. And and those reserves are also, you know, they're stored in fat cells and they're stored in, you know, the different uh, lysosomic structures within the cell. But uh, kundalini can begin the process of lipidosis as well without you having to go on to a fast. Uh, sometimes the person's uh, metabolism is going to experience a pretty strong uptick in the amount of energetic uh, reserves that are being used. Now, this can this this can also have the opposite effect. It can also make you sleepy, really, really sleepy, because uh, you're not getting the amount of energy that your body's used to having. And so it clicks in into a into a rest mode so that you're conserving as much energy as you can because you're not reinforcing it um, uh, through eating. Uh, now this you know talking about a fast when you're eating normally or the way the kundalini wants you to eat. Well, this is a very this is really one of the most interesting points with the kundalini is that as it begins to choose your food. It's also choosing your metabolism response. So it's not just going, oh, Chris, I want you to eat more green leafy vegetables, green leafy things. And, and it's, so it's not just saying, oh, I want you to eat that kind of food. It, it, it's also saying, oh, this is the kind of metabolism response that, that, the, that Chris's body needs in order to hold uh, the divine energy 
uh, in a greater way uh, for this period of transformation that's happening to him. And so as you allow the kundalini to choose your food, you're allowing the process of the transformation uh, to be to be supported through different uh, metabolisms that the kundalini will bring. Um, you know, there. You know, you can look up metabolism on on Wikipedia or any of those M E T A B O L I S M, and and you can go ahead and read about that. And it's you know, I think it's it's very interesting that uh, you know. The, the cells, there are cells that take energy from light. Kundalini is also a lighted source, as as evidenced by a lit-up pineal gland. And so uh, the kundalini itself can become a source of food and nourishment for all the cells of the body. And through that, a form of kundalini metabolism is being uh uh, given to the human system. And this metabolism uh, will vary uh, somewhat significantly from, from your normal uh, uh, metabolism, you know, of the unawakened person. As I said before, the kundalini will, will co-opt those normal processes and insert its own program of metabolism within the human. And so you can stay up late 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 for for long periods of hours uh but on the on the other hand you know at the, at the valley end of the of the sine wave uh you'll have to sleep for 14 hours a day okay and this will this is also dependent upon what kind of work you're doing and and uh you know your level of communication with the kundalini within you you know a lot of different factors play into this um are there toxic residues in the food that you're eating, i.e., you know, commercial farming as done by, you know, Monsanto-based uh, farming practices in the United States and other countries? You know, that also has a different level of, of metabolistic quotient for the kundalini. And the kundalini, you know, of course, is is doing its best to to take those toxins out of the food that you're eating and then put them into the fecal matter and, and um, you, know, pros, you know, doing its best to, to, you know, through the liver, through the kidneys and through the different uh, cleansing mechanisms within the body to, to try to make the blood as pure and, and clean as possible, even though the level of food may not be the best. Now, when I was homeless living on the streets, you know, you pretty much eat what you can, what you can eat. And so, you know, I'm not saying that, oh, gosh, unless you have an absolutely pure, organic, uh, free-range, you know, breastfed uh, uh, diet that, that, that you know, your kundalini is going to go wrong with you. No, it, just, it will just make more of an effort to protect you against the toxins that you're consuming. However, if you don't have a challenged homeless position, as I did for a number of years, uh, and you can... Uh, make the effort to get the organic products and to eat as cleanly as you can, even to the point of growing your own vegetables and 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 you know fruit trees and whatnot. Uh, then then do that. Really make the effort to to join with your kundalini in creating a metabolism structures that allow the kundalini to to take uh, more energy out of the food without as much of a, of a toxic load um, that is currently, you know, uh, uh, more than available in the United States. It's, I've traveled across this beautiful country and in, in, in certain parts of the world, and it's hard to find organic food. And, you know, I hate to say it, but it's true. I mean, uh, here in Sonoma County, California, on the on the west coast of the United States, you know we we've, we've got the perfect region there for for growing organic food. I mean, literally, if you want to eat organic, we'll move out here to Sonoma County. You know, drop me a line, say hello. Uh, the, you know, but not the, the rest of the country isn't really set up like that right now. You know, the winter is starting to come on, and and uh, we've been having rain here, and I'm pretty sure people. Uh, you know, you can't really grow your broccoli uh, 
you know, even though that's a winter crop, you know, you can't grow it in, in some parts of this country. And so, yes, you, you'd have to go to a store to get it now. Uh, there are some stores like Whole Foods and some uh, some um, cooperatives throughout the country that, that do partake of the organic foods. And I would definitely encourage you to seek them out in, in, you know, in and around the areas where you live so that you, too, can participate in, in this type of a, of a dietary structure. This will have a direct effect on the metabolism. Okay. Uh, most important with metabolism is, is you letting the kundalini choose your food. You letting the kundalini choose whether or not you eat at all. Sometimes the kundalini will inflict a fast on you so that you can have an accelerated uh, metabolism for lipidosis and for other other types of uh, internal cleansing modalities that the kundalini will bring bring together. And sometimes the body needs to be uh, uh, stressed in, in the amount of food that it's allowed to take in. Digestion takes a lot of energy in the body. Which is why, you know, if we eat a big meal, then, you know, we, we kind of feel like we need to, to sit down in that chair and watch TV or just go straight to bed. Uh, I would not recommend going straight to bed. I would recommend maybe taking a walk, a gentle, easy walk around the block or something like that, and then sit in your chair and then go to bed. Uh, always remember that after a big meal, uh, within a metabolism uh, uh, context, uh, your triglyceride count is very important, especially if you're overweight. You want to pay attention to your triglycerides. You don't want to go into doing any kind of really heavy, heavy activity because that can really put a tremendous load on the heart. And, uh, you know, you can give yourself a heart attack if, if you eat a huge meal like, say, what you might have at Christmas dinner. You know, then you go out and you try to play soccer, <laughs> play a game of soccer. That may not be the best move. Uh, for you, and so you want to take care, uh, uh, you know, and, and uh, look into your triglycerides and other, and other areas of the metabolism structures within the body that that could be damaged by by too much activity uh, too soon after a a big meal. Now, of course, the kundalini, as I mentioned before, being a force of the, of divine, can override any and all of these systems. It can correct any and all of these systems. But what you have to do is surrender. Surrender to this process. Surrender to the kind of food you're being given to eat. Surrender to the amount of time you're, you're given to sleep. Surrender to the amount of time you're given to not sleep. One of the hardest things for people uh, is, to, is to change uh, what they think is, are the amount of hours they need sleep. When Kundalini comes in and changes the metabolism, well, your sleep requirements also change. And as these sleep requirements change, well, there's the big fight between the ego and the Kundalini. The ego says, well, I don't know about you, but I need eight hours of sleep. And the Kundalini is going, no, you only need five. And the ego is going, no, I need eight. And the Kundalini says, my child, you only need five. But you can try for eight if you wish. You know, the, the person will get five hours sleep and, and the ego is still in uh, in defiance of the kundalini. And, and so the person feels very tired and and uh, somewhat stressed throughout their day because they didn't get the amount of time that their ego thinks is appropriate for them because they're so used to getting eight hours of sleep. And so I want to really encourage those of you who are listening to to surrender your ego to the kundalini surrender your expectations uh, of, of what has worked for you your entire life surrender that to the kundalini and let the kundalini begin its changes upon you the changes aren't going to be just of a metabolism nature they're going to be throughout the entire five body system of the human being the physical body, mental body, egoic body, spiritual body, and emotional body. All of these bodies are being changed and transformed often at the same time. And so a whole plethora of, uh, 
of uh, phenomena, you know, may come to a person and the metabolism just being one of many. But the metabolism is, is a very, very, very important uh, uh, aspect of the Kundalini awakening person's experience. And uh, this this can can go right into the emotional body because how you feel will will become an emotional issue. It's like, oh, geez, I didn't get my eight hours of sleep last night. Oh, my God. And now I have to go to work. I have to drive to work. I have to do all this, listen to these people. Oh, my God, life is just ter- terrible. You know, and, and, and so on and so forth. And instead of allowing the the ego to destroy your day, I want you to welcome the gift that the kundalini is bringing you through an altered metabolism. The gift of not needing eight hours of sleep. The gift of needing only five. And only five hours for a certain amount of time until the kundalini comes back around again and saying, okay, I'm going to shorten this to three or I'm going to extend this to nine or 12 hours sleep. I know I used to sleep uh, when I could 14 hours a day for the transformation to, to be given. And, you know, a lot of work happens uh, in the sleep period. And so it's not just because of a lack of energy that the, that the, uh, that the kundalini is, uh, is changing in you. It's not like that at all. Sorry, turn my phone off and it makes that funny noise. Um, it's not just that. I mean, there are other processes of a divine nature, of a divine transformation that are occurring uh, with the kundalini while the person is sleeping. You've got to remember that when you sleep, your ego is no longer engaged or it is engaged in, in the dream life, which takes it away from uh, blocking the kundalini uh, during the sleep period and the, and the kundalini is free uh, to work as much as it wants to work uh, within the dream life of the person, and so. But it'll change. It'll change. The Kundalini may only need that for for uh, you know five hours instead of eight. Maybe it'll need it for fourteen. Maybe it'll bring it down to three or four hours. Some people don't sleep at all. You know, there's a saint in uh, in India, a woman, you know, who hasn't slept for years. You know this. <laughs> These, that that is definitely a, 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 a divine skill to not sleep. Um, so s- sleep is just one aspect of it. Let's talk about your your day to day energetic requirements. Um, you know, when it, within a Kundalini context, I'm I'm once again I'm going to say, don't drink the caffeine. Stop with the stimulants. Really, stop with the stimulants. Your body doesn't need those stimulants. Your ego may need those stimulants. Your, your, uh, you know, your workmates may need those stimulants, but you don't need the stimulants anymore with the kundalini. Okay, stop with the stimulants. Give your adrenals a break. The last thing you want to do is to have adrenal burnout. I mean, that can really, really upset the apple cart, so to speak. So, give it a break. No processed high fructose corn syrups. That's also a stimulant. That's, you know, and there's an addictive quality to that too. Uh, you know, this this Monsanto generated food product from corn. Uh, stay away from the high fructose corn syrup. Stay away from artificial white sugars or or even brown sugars that are just white sugars covered with a little bit of molasses to make them look brown and so they can market it as a you know organic brown sugar. Uh, no, 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 no. I mean the the kind of sugars that are that are really best for an individual would be honey. Okay, uh, um, a lot of people like to use stevia. I I, I don't use stevia. Um, I just typically don't eat a lot of sugar uh, in, until I'm compelled to by the kundalini. So, for instance, today I've not had any sugar at all, and I'm drinking my my green tea, which I admit does have a little bit of, uh, of caffeine in it, but a lot of my changes have already occurred. Um, the uh, the people that I'm talking to uh, with regards to caffeine are people that haven't had those changes occur yet. So these would be people within the first five years of their Kundalini awakening experience. Now, uh, if if you have any questions about what I've uh, been discussing up to this point, please give me a call 
at 347-934-0026, 347-934-0026. And I'm going to go ahead and, and have Amelia come on. Hello, Amelia. Oh, my. Hi, Chris, and hello. And hey, there's hey. a comment here from Julie, if I can read it out to you. Please do. Please in the do. chat room, yeah. She says, living in Iowa, there aren't many resources for organic, but she has moved to, excuse me, she has moved to South Carolina, and it's fairly abundant. And she has been making changes with her husband, and um, with herself and her husband's um, diet, and um, quite a bit in the last two weeks. Well, congratulations, Julie. Yeah, that was a great move that you made. And it surprises me that Ohio doesn't have more of, a, of an organic option. I understand that, that you know, most of Iowa is covered in either soybeans or, or corn, and most of those soybeans and corn are, are under Monsanto regulation, and so, of course, they, they wouldn't be organic. They would be, you know, of, of the toxic uh, food. Uh but you know, I've been to Ohio and I like the state. I've been to Iowa as well, you know, and I and and I think organic farming would would be a great boon to those areas. And and of course, you know, North Carolina and South Carolina. Well, you know, you're in the Sun Belt down there, and and uh, yeah, there's there's a lot more I think growing in general because of the climate, and a, and then uh, you know you would have more of an option for organic foods. Um, what a what a blessing you are to your husband and son, Julie, uh, a Kundalini awaken, awakening mother and wife. What a lucky husband and what a lucky son. Thank you for the comment, um, uh, Amelia. Yes, Kristen. Have you had periods of, of uh, longer than wished for sleep, or 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 anything of that nature? Yeah, with regard to sleep, I have. Um, I'm actually going through that at the moment again. Um, I went, yes, typically my sleep has got shorter. Um, I would have had, and I still do have the waking up in the middle of the night, where I might spend an hour or two completely awake. What is happening lately for me, Chrism, is that I'm getting very little sleep. Um I'm waking up at maybe 2 o'clock and I'm not able to go back to bed until 6 and then I'm really not really going back to bed at 6. So I'm getting maybe two or three hours of sleep at the moment. Um, how are your, but the thing how about are you, is... Yeah, go ahead. But the thing about... Yeah, um, typically, just I noticed today now, for example... Um, I crashed this evening, but it's a matter of allowing that to happen as well, rather than feeling, um, my energy is very good. When I'm up during the night and that, I'm in no way tired. I'm not fighting it. I'm just allowing it to be. And I do things during the night. I spend time. I meditate. I do some work. Um, I'm just very much awake. Um, sometimes it was a full moon. Sometimes I go out for a little walk in the night. And that's very nice. I, I felt last night my energy was very, very intense. Um, so then it's good to go out into the grass and maybe ground a bit as well. Very good, very good. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, have you had, uh, have you done any prolonged fasting out there in Ireland? Um, prolonged fasting? No, but Three I have been given days. to eat. Oh, yes, I have. Okay, all right. And you have been given to eat what? Well, I have been given to eat very specific things and to drop eating very specific things. I think I spoke about that before. Oh, yes, um, okay. You know, yeah. Well, okay, yeah. So so thank you. Thank you, Amelia Centaur. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's very important for the people to pay attention to the kundalini requirements for food. Now, okay, I was traveling uh, with Magdalene de Deus in, uh, in France. And uh, I, I would say the, the Germans and the French are pretty much ahead of a lot of the folks in Europe as far as organics go. But uh, 
you, you don't really get to find too much of it. I mean, I was lucky to find organic apple juice, you know, in, in the different places that we went. Uh, so it's not out there for everyone, but but it is there, and 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 you do if you if you just look around a little bit in the area where you're at, you can find the organic groceries. Uh, they will have a positive effect on your metabolism. They will have a positive effect on how the kundalini is converting your your metabolic uh, structures in the, in the human system. More of a divine light comes in and, and I'm trying to find a way I'm searching right now to find a way to divine or, or to 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 give you a word for the the light that the kundalini the, the light that the kundalini emits is almost a physical property um and it, it's not just you know it's not so open to the to the to the visual spectrum, although you know some people can see it, uh, it's 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 and it's not a hard light, but it is a it is a light that is almost like a plasma, almost like a, the mix between a laser and a plasma, and this this light that the kundalini brings from itself and into the body uh, is is largely what does a lot of the transforming and so you know uh, this is what people see when they're staring at you or this is what people respond to and uh, you know when they when they want to touch you or you know or, or hold something that you've held or sit where you've been sitting and things of that nature they sense this plasmic form of light well this plasmic form of light is what is suffusing the body and changing the cells uh, and it's not just with the metabolism, although it, it does, you know, within the metabolistic structures, it's changing the way the body is is appreciating energy. It's actually, uh, it's an override control, is a, is a way to put it. It overrides the body's normal control mechanisms, certainly with metabolism, but in other areas as well. Every, everything from from mental acuity to emotional sensitivity to sexual uh, uh, awareness to you know uh, metabolism uh, uh, you know so on and so forth. I mean, it, it takes it it overrides the control the control structures uh, for the complete body, but it it doesn't do it in a way that is foreign to the body because once again, uh, it bears repeating. Uh, the body is wired to have kundalini. Every single body that has a spine is wired to have the kundalini. doesn't mean that it's going to come out of dormancy just because the wiring is there. Uh, it doesn't mean that at all. It just means that when that person is ready to have the kundalini, either through uh, self-realization or through shaktipat or through uh, you know, a uh, sporting accident, you know, this stuff happens. The kundalini will come up and that will begin the the uh, the metabolic and the other uh, responses that the kundalini has for the for the physical system. I'm just going to ask people, is, <laughs> I should have asked this earlier. It's the sound is coming through. OK, uh, can you answer me there on the chat group there? I have an eye on you right now. I just want to make sure that I'm not talking to a to a blank desk here. Anybody? It looks like uh, Julie's talking. Yes, the sound is good. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll just I'll take that yes. Then. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. it's it's good, Chris. And John John just popped his head in and said yes. <laughs> Thank you, John. Thank you, John. And and, and and for that kindness, may you win the next hand. Um. <laughs> Chris, can I ask you a question, Chris, when you're ready? Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you know the way the heat in the body is, um, you know, is the the male and the cold. The the cold is the is the is the divine female. But lately, the heat in my body, um. 
Oh, it is amazingly intense, and not only that, but it is wet, and it is really, really intense. Now, it's not menopausal or anything like that, and it's definitely kundalini. And I'm just wondering, too, is it connected into metabolism? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. But that's actually more connected into the to the plasma, the, the plasma light that I was talking about. So, hello, Chris, Kristen Harris, I see you typing there. Hello to you. Nice to see you joining us. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And welcome to my world with the heat there, uh, Amelia Centaur. <laughs> yeah, what what that is is that's that's actual heat. Part of it is taken from the 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 the, the energetic quotient within the body that is being utilized by the Kundalini, and another part of that just comes with the Kundalini of its own, of its own. Let me give you an example of that would be the uh, the, the the cold the, the extreme cold that the sac- sacred feminine can can uh, pump into the into the uh, into the body. There is not an organ of generation in the body that can pump uh, that degree of, of of cold of freezing molten freezing metal, and I mean. Uh, when I say molten freezing metal, it's just like when you when you drop the degrees of metal to to a point, uh, the the metal will begin to melt through the uh, the severity of freezing, uh, and I'm just using that as a way of describing how absolutely freezing, freezing, freezing cold, this liquid cold can can come into your body, and there is no. There is no organ or 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 uh, or uh, uh, you know metabolic uh, origin for this energy that is coming into the body, and so in much the same way is the heat also generated that way. Now uh, the body will respond to it, so the body will respond to this this amazing level of of, of cold that the sacred female uh, can put into the body. It will respond. It will. It will try to shiver. It will try to cover itself up. It will try to drink something hot. It will try to get into a warm bath. But none of that will work because it is of this physical nature and not of the physical nature at the same time, which is exactly what a person is becoming through Kundalini transformation. You are becoming of this world and of another world at the same time. This is what people have to understand. Uh, and this doesn't mean that you know you you have an advantage over other people or that you know you can go around saying yeah you know I walk in two worlds you only walk in one <laughs> no you can't do that because walking in two worlds is far more difficult and far more of a lifetime learning scenario that any kind of a competitive uh, type of attitude like like I just described. Uh, um, is an attitude of the ego, and that that attitude will have its, shall we say, uh, proper response mitigated to it. And so, walking in two worlds can be really, really, really hard. And as uh, Amelia described, the heat that is just amazing. And I have this heat too, and and it just, whew, it's. <laughs> It doesn't matter, uh, you know, what how cold it is outside. You're 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 warm on the inside. I mean, you're sweating in a freezing rainstorm. I mean, you're sweating. You're you're taking off the clothes. People are putting on the clothes. Okay, and and it's the same, but the reverse. When the sacred feminine comes in, it brings that absolutely stunning, freezing liquid into your veins. And it's not a liquid. I'm just using that as a as a way to describe how it feels and. <laughs> so yeah, it'll, it'll it'll come in, it'll come in that way, and it comes in strong. The whole metabolism is being taken into a a um, a transformation. Um, I will use the word ascension only because ascension is an indication of of uh, for me at least of blending into the two worlds. You will have uh, the Kundalini metabolism in the physical and in the spiritual world that 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 you are being birthed into, uh, and many of the structures and many of the energetic requirements that the Kundalini 
is is guiding you towards are for uh, the nutrients that the body requires in the new world or the second world that the person is walking into. And it doesn't mean that you have to see the entities or you have to, you know, that everything is going to be uh, visually of a different nature. You, you have to understand that people are unique. People come into this with a different level of karma. For each person, it's a different level of karma. And for that different level of karma, will be given different phenomena associated with that karma. And so I may be able to see entities and have seen entities since I was five. It doesn't matter. The next person will go, what are you talking about? I don't see anything. And the next person will go, well, I can hear them, and I can smell them, but I can't see them. Okay, so... You know, it'll it'll you'll you'll find people that have similar experiences as you do. I mean, the you know, uh, we are unique, but we do share traits as well. We do share some of the uh, the uh, phenomenal traits that come with the Kundalini. Uh, seeing entities at all would be a shared phenomenal trait. Having kriyas would be a shared phenomenal trait. Uh, you know, the hot, the cold, the roving temperatures. You can have the right side of the body really hot, the left side of the body really cold, you know, and you're just, you you as a, as, <laughs> as an ego are just, you know, you're kind of being pulled this way or that with it, and that's why it's so important for people to completely surrender themselves uh, to the Kundalini. Um, if you have any questions, please uh, call this number, 347-934-0026. And let's see, okay, all right, checking the chat group here, no questions there. Okay, so as as the Kundalini plasmic light continues its, its transformational aspect around the body, uh, the phenomena may begin to represent what is occurring within the body, as within, so without, as above, so below, that type of, a, of an equation can develop. Uh, it's going to be really hard for those of you who do not have a very good control over the ego to deal with these things. Um, sometimes, as I, as I mentioned about two minutes ago, the, uh, the changes in the body are not for this physical world, but they're for the other world. This is how you can all of a sudden be only given to eat vegetables. And then... To narrow it down even further, just a certain range of vegetables, no fruits, no nuts, okay, no soya, no whatever, right? Uh, the kundalini will begin to narrow that down, and that is for the light, the lightness of the person coming into it. And it doesn't mean that all of a sudden you're not an omnivore anymore. It just means for that time being, while these transforma transformations are, are, are taking place, that you're not an omnivore. Um, within uh, metabolistic structures, uh, I'm going to suggest that people do not become vegan, V-E-G-A-N. And let me repeat that. Do not become vegan uh, while you're having a kundalini uh, experience. It, is, it can be very, very uh, uh, damaging to the, uh, to the kundalini process itself, unless unless the kundalini is driving you in that way. And then, of course, you know, I'm still saying get your vitamin D, get your get your pantothenic acid, you know, get all of these other things from whatever sources. It doesn't mean that you can't be a vegetarian. It just means within the terms of veganism, V-E-G-A-N-I-S-M, uh, this is not particularly conducive to kundalini transformations within a, you know, within within the, you know, the understanding of metabolism and in, in general health of the body as well. Veganism is detrimental to most bodies. Now, there are some people that can handle it, but uh, most people need their niacin and their vitamin B12 and the things that the body can't produce of its own. Um, if you, to be a vegetarian, well, then that's fine. You know, just use some dairy. Use some dairy. Eat some eggs. You know, people who know me close, and I'm not a real egg eater, but I'll tell you what, uh, I will eat eggs if, if the kundalini in me is, is pushing me into a vegetarian role, which it has done. I ate the eggs. 
Don't even try to get me to eat mushrooms, though. That's a different subject. Uh, so, yeah, within the context of the diet, uh, do not become vegan. Yes, if, if the kundalini is compelling you to become a vegetarian, then become a vegetarian. Yes, if the kundalini is telling you to eat as much meat as possible and no veggies and no fruits, then you become that carnivore. You know? Have them cook it the way you like it. <laughs> okay, but don't run away from that. Don't think that you're not being as spiritual as a vegan person or a vegetarian person. The vegan person is only becoming spiritual because they're becoming closer to death than, than either of the other two options. So, you know, their spirituality is assured if they can survive it. Uh, but the uh, the omnivore really is the middle path. That is the path that uh, the kundalini will encourage people to take. I don't care what shape your teeth are in. I don't care that you don't have uh, 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 fangs or <laughs> teeth shaped like a wolf's teeth. I don't care. You know, the fact of the matter is is that an omnivore diet partakes of different levels of proteins and probably the most uh, diverse levels of proteins that that are available on this planet as opposed to a carnivore or, or a strictly a vegetarian creature. And so these foods will have a direct effect on your, metal, on your metabolism. So I want you to once again pay very close attention to how the kundalini feels when you walk down the food aisle. Is it your ego that wants to have that honey-baked ham? Not that I would ever promote that, but I guess I just did. Is it your ego that wants to have that, or is the kundalini saying, yeah, you really need that honey-baked ham? I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to put anything past the kundalini to suggest for any one individual. You know, I try not to be absolutist. Um, I don't eat pork products, but that's just me. You know, other people eat pork products just fine. Um, but, yeah, really check with yourself. Check in, in your interior self about how and why this food has all of a sudden become attractive to you. Don't be afraid to question your ego. And if you can determine that it's kundalini, never question that. Kundalini is your high self. Kundalini is your inner divine. It knows you better than you know you or ever will know yourself. You know, until you die and you partake in the building of another body. Okay. Uh, so, within a metabolism context, really let the kundalini choose your food. It's choosing them for very, very specific reasons. And if you can avoid the canned food for that chemical that they put into all canned products, I don't care if it's organic or not, uh, there's a chemical that they put on the inside of the can that preserves and 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 keeps uh, keeps the food in a in a chemical state that that has been shown to to uh, to give people cancer to give the uh, the poor fellow mortals that they tested it on rats and dogs and cats and whatnot you know it's been shown to to develop cancers in in those creatures and 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 may God forgive our scientists for doing that. To those creatures um, yeah if you can avoid the canned products then fine if if you're using canned products as a way of of, uh, of of storage or for you know for for an emergency or something like that that's just fine that's just fine the kundalini will use your organs of filtration to to take out as much of that toxic load as as possible I think it's called Biphenol something, biphenol. You guys know what I'm talking about, I'm sure. It's why the, the plastic bottles uh, are now biphenol-free, that type of thing. Same thing goes into the cans. Uh, if you have any questions about your metabolism, 347-934-0026. Metabolism and the Kundalini is the subject today. If you're on the uh, chat group and you want to type out a question, please do so. And Amelia Centaro and myself will catch it, and we'll go ahead and read it out over the air. Um, I'm going to come back over here to Rosemary. Hello, Rosemary. I'm going to put you on here. Hi, Rosemary. Well, 
maybe not. Maybe not here. She's listening, but she's probably stepping away from the phone. So, Rosemary, you know, she's on a very special kundalini-infused diet, and uh, and if she wants to to come on, then uh, we'll go ahead and uh, and talk to her about her diet. My diet uh, these days is very simple. Uh, one thing that I will encourage everybody to have for their for their metabolism is the uh, is a banana. Have a banana in the morning, uh, along with the watermelon. If you're in the Kundalini heat stage, like Amelia is, then uh, she, you know, you can't get the watermelon these days in Ireland or even in Northern California, for that matter. Although I have to say, the one watermelon that I grew in my garden, I have on the table right now. And any of you that would like uh, that watermelon, <laughs> let me know. And I will save you a slice. You come right on over and you can pick that slice up. Uh, hi, Rosemary. Hi. Yes. I think I couldn't. I pushed the button the wrong direction. Can you hear me, Amelia? Yep. I can hear you okay. fine. Okay, thank you. I pushed the wrong button before, but I'm, I've been listening from the beginning. Very grateful. Hey, uh, so so when you do your, your eating... Are you paying attention to what the kundalini tells you to eat? I'm learning. I'm learning because I've done very healthy for the last oh, seven, eight years. Really, I basically eat what my body uh, is. I know is needing, and I get some help sometimes from people with that expertise. But I've done that by the general commonly understood, and I haven't eaten sugar for years, um, or fatty food or any of that, those um, high sugar drinks or caffeine. So I I believe, if I look at it in the bigger picture, that it was Kundalini through those people who was leading me to be eating healthy so that I would be healthy. And well, very when, you, yeah. when you have said before about or examples, if, if you, and, and I, eat, I do eat uh, protein, and eggs and meat and beef once a week and and fish at least once a day and um, once a day you eat I, fish I, once a day. I am sensing a little bit of direction. My challenge is is learning to pay attention to that and to trust it because um, I know my other some of this restrictions on my food came from just the habit of being a compulsive eater. Right, right, right. And so now you're you're learning to discern what the kundalini is 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 guiding you to eat. Yeah, just being open to the fact that, and it it is truly one's ego for sure, and it has served me well. I, I'm I'm very healthy, and I'm not on any medications, and I'm an older person, so uh, I know I'm healthy. Um, and it's saying, and, you, and you're, again, you're you're eating. You're eating fish every day? Yes. Yeah, okay. There you go, folks. Live live a long and healthy life and, you know, have 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 fish every day. Don't forget to thank the fish. Uh, oh, I never do good. that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I have fish out here. I have I have five fish, goldfish and and once you once you get to know fish and they get to know you, you can see that that you know, they're they're no slouches there either. They're very smart. They're very they're very cogent to what's going on. And so, uh, some of those Andromedas fish, like um, uh, I think that's uh, the correct term. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> like the salmon, the salmon. You know, they spawn and then they die, and 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 they give their bodies to to the environment. And that would that would that would include the bears and the and the cougars, but also the people. Okay, and you know, and I'm not talking about factory farming. You know, this is not uh, this is not okay at all. This factory farming. The Japanese are raping the seabed, and uh, you know, it it's bad enough. You know, they they've got their hands full right now. The Japanese people with Fukushima and all of that. Okay, let's talk about Fukushima and the radioactive effects upon your metabolism. Do purchase a product um, that I use every day called Atomidine. 
A T O M I D I N E. It's it's uh, it's oral iodine, and you know you can take a drop. A drop will have about 600 micrograms of uh, iodine in it, and the iodine can help uh, help a body that's being that's coming into contact with radioactive isotopes. I'm not saying that it's not you know if you, if you get you know so much uh, isotope action in your body, I mean it's just going to kill you. Uh, but uh, I don't know. I don't know what levels that Fukushima is uh, putting into the into the atmosphere. I know that I know that there's a lot more being put into the ocean, and the ocean is where uh, those factory farm ships are, are harvesting. And uh, you know, you may want to go to your grocery store with a Geiger counter when it comes to the seafood that. Uh, that you may be consuming in the next six months, uh, it's quite possible that they've come in contact with the radioactive water releases that are coming out of Fukushima at this time. And then, and then the question, uh, you know, the easy question can be, well, what does the Kundalini do about the radioactivity? Well, it will begin to adjust your body. It will begin to adjust the thyroid. It will begin to adjust the levels of of uh, T3 and T4 and uh, and the uh, TSH uh, components of the of the thyroid that are being injected into the bloodstream, you will adapt. Your body will adapt. Uh, it doesn't mean that you know that it won't negatively impact your health. It may very well negatively impact your health, especially if you're eating all these other uh, uh, toxic infused uh, forms of, of cancer-causing food that Monsanto is really interested in, in promoting. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, uh, the radioactivity, we're not going to be able to get away from that. Now, let's, you, let's remember that uh, uranium is natural to this earth. It's just not so natural to have so much of it collected and, you know, into one mass. And, and the same with plutonium and all of these, all of these, Things are of the earth. They are natural of the earth, but they have been unnaturally uh, pushed together by the by the egos of men and, and uh, men and women. And this this is what uh, is leading us into a, a Fukushima type of disaster. Uh, you know, you'll know. You know, if you can look up radiation poisoning on the, on the internet, and you can find. You know, the hair will fall out. Uh, you may develop a skin lesion, skin may begin to fall off, that type of thing. That's pretty severe stuff. I'm not suggesting that with regards to the oceans and the atmosphere, but I am suggesting that your metabolism is going to be affected through radioactive increases in the water of the ocean and in the air of the atmosphere. And those of you that have the Kundalini, you know, your your bodies will will adapt. Those that don't have the Kundalini and are not eating well, uh, you know, they may have more of a challenge. They may be more affected by the, the amount of radioactivity coming out of Fukushima and coming out in other areas, too, that are, that are not uh, open to media outlets, shall we say. We're not being told everything that's being placed into the, uh, into the waters and the atmosphere and the earth, just so you know. Anyway, so if you have a question about that, Kundalini and your and, and the Fukushima or Kundalini and your metabolism, uh, please feel free to call nine or area code three four seven nine three four zero zero two six three four seven nine three four zero zero two six, and uh, yeah. I have a question, Prism. Hi. You know the way you speak about kidneys um, as an organ in relation and uh, or adrenals in relation to the Kundalini. Could you say something about the liver? I'm having um, some pain in that area, and just wondering, could you say something specific about the liver? Well, if you're the, the Kundalini, the, the liver is another filtration organ, like the kidneys. Uh, the adrenals are not so filtrating. But the kidneys are, are blood filters, but so is the liver. The liver, you have two lobes of the, you have two parts of the liver. You know, you know, you have the, the main, the main aspect of the liver, and then you have a, another aspect that's connected to it. Um, that's that's 
where the the blood is detoxed, really. The liver collects it and 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 uh, secretes it into the into the into the waste material that the body comes with the kundalini uh the liver takes on a dual role it takes on the not only the detoxing of the blood and of the, the food supply but also of the uh, of oh, what's the word um the sh- I'll just use malevolent emotional qualities uh, it also has the effect of giving a person e- extreme levels of energy. Um, in your context, I mean, here's the thing, folks. I mean, when because Amelia asked me the question, my kundalini goes straight into Amelia's special equation, and this is what happens with everybody that calls in. Uh, in the context of... of <laughs> Of, of I have to I, have to, I can't uh, say completely about your your process in me because it's too personal. But within the context of livers in general, stay away from alcohol. Stay away from alcohol. I do. I just want the listeners to know that. <laughs> Stay away from the alcohol. Uh, if you feel like you have a liver toxicity issue, uh, what they've used in Europe in the emergency rooms in Europe is uh, silymarin, and I always pronounce it silymarin, and it just seems to make so much more sense to me that way. But it's spelled S I L Y M as in Mary, A R I N as in Nancy, silymarin. And that that goes. I take a couple of capsules of those every day, just because of the the pollution that I breathe through the air. Well, that goes straight into your lungs. That goes straight into your bloodstream. That goes from your bloodstream straight into your liver, and you build up a toxic load in your liver. And so I take the salimarin to to mitigate some of that. And in addition, the, the the Kundalini compels me to do that because it wants me to learn how to take how to take advantage of the gifts of grace that are already on this world instead of just relying on the kundalini. See, I I surrender completely to the kundalini, but the kundalini says, oh, hey, okay, there's stuff there on this planet that you're at that is just as conducive at detoxing a, a certain body organ as as praying to me to do it for you. And so I'm... I'm I'm relaying this information to you. The, you know, the, the the question comes to mind in some listeners, I'm sure. Well, geez, Louise, if the Kundalini is such a great divine goddess, God, whatever, why do you need to do anything? Just let it do everything for you. Well, that's not the way it works. Kundalini is not there to take the place of, of your discipline, of your initiative, of your motivation, of your... Of your of your spiritual expression, it's part of an evolutionary process where you know you you've gone through so many lives on this world, you've gone through a certain amount of spiritual maturation that it's time for you to be able to walk in this world and another world at the same time. Okay, it will help you far more in the other world than it should have to in this world. You should have to take some responsibility. And I get that pushed at me a lot. You know, when I say, oh, uh, Kundalini, you know, go to Amelia, and she's got a hangnail on her little toe. Um, could you go and and, uh, and and heal Amelia's hangnail on her little toe? And the Kundalini will go, no, no. Let Amelia heal her own hangnail. No offense, Amelia. I'm just using that as an example. I'm not even sure you can get a hangnail on the little toe. <laughs> Maybe you can. <laughs> anyway, so with the liver, the liver can can under under severe toxic levels, which I kind of grew up with uh, in the in the '60s and '70s. Uh, Farming then we were we were just starting to you know all the commercial farmers were spraying their fields with this and that DDT. Remember what happened to the brown pelicans and the DDT? Well, that was being sprayed all on everybody's food, okay. And so 
within that context, you know, we were poisoning ourselves, and we still are. We're just doing it in a, in a more, in a different way, using political protocol rather than than correct farming protocols. But uh, the liver was there to detox it. Okay, and if you're having pain in the liver, then then you may have some liver stones that you can get rid of, and there's some liver cleanses uh, that are very helpful and. Uh, Salimarin is one of those. So, Amelia, for you, I would suggest that you look to see if you can get S-I-L-Y-M-A-R-I-N in Ireland. That's in- I actually, that's really interesting. I, I bought this today, S-I-L-Y-B-U-M, and then M-A-R-I-A-N-U-M, milk thistle. Is that what you're speaking about? That is exactly what I'm speaking of. <laughs> I bought that yesterday, and it's not so much pain, um, it's discomfort, it's it's like I can feel my liver the way I used to be able to feel my kidneys, I know exactly where it is. Well, that's right, that's right, and and uh, it's also an indication of, of, uh, of trapped energy in your liver. Um, okay. If you do, if you do any of the hot yoga, I don't know if they have that in Ireland, but if you do the hot yoga, there's a couple stretches inside the hot yoga 26 positions or poses that uh, that really release uh, levels of energy from the liver. And uh, I would suggest uh, for those that can do the hot yoga safely, meaning safely, uh, then there there are a few moves towards the end of that routine that will that will release uh, energetic loads from the liver, but also just doing some severe exercise and stretches and maybe for you Amelia, do some yoga, uh, uh, gentle back stretches on the beach there after you kind of jog walk down to the beach, you know, as, as you've been instructed to do, and uh, do some yoga on the beach. Really, even here in the winter time, I know it's cold, but you're not really cold, are you? <laughs> no, I have my ho- my own hot yoga going on. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You've got the internal hot yoga going on, and so so for you, there is no need to to uh, to button up or do anything like that. You can just go outdoors and just start walking down to the ocean. I think you're about a mile away, right? Is that about a mile? Maybe yeah. a little more. Yeah. And yeah, about that. Now don't watch the waves. You know, my mom always said, "Never turn your back on the ocean." And I'll, and I'll uh, since you've met my mother, then I will, uh, I will uh, <laughs> pass that on to you. <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah. Uh, the liver has a lot of energy in it. If you're not exercising, if you're not twisting, if you're not uh, doing, I'm not Chrism actually. I'm not, and I had been doing months back. I'm actually not exercising, so. That's interesting to know. Yeah. So get on it, girl. Okay. I shall. Get on it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. And that goes for <laughs> any of you that that are having kidney pain or liver pain, anything of that. And I don't mean if you're having excruciating pain, then I want you to go to the ER. You know, I'm not going to be irresponsible and say that all doctors don't know what they're doing, even though, you know, some of them don't. Uh, you get on over to the ER and let them do tests on you. Don't let them, like, take your kidneys out or, you know, take your liver out. I mean, I don't know that they're lining up to do that anyway, but, uh, you know, always get a second or third opinion before, you know, you start losing an organ. Uh, and also uh, look at the ductless glands. All the ductless glands that, that are in the body are there for a reason. And, you know, the surgeons just love to take out gallbladders. Oh, gosh, there's your oh, your, gall- your gallbladder's got a little nick in it. We'll just have to take that thing out. <laughs> don't, don't let them take away. Don't let them harvest your organs just for their ego, you know, their ego expression. Just don't do that. You say is going to be if they if you take out your gallbladder or, you know, any of the other uh, organs that they want to harvest off of a person. And, I, and I'm saying harvest. I'm not using it in the, in the terms, for, you know, for... Uh, be put into other people. They just want to take them out and toss them in the trash and then think that's going to be better. Uh, I would just assume you keep the organs uh, in the body the way they're meant to be. This is what your kundalini 
uh, is working with. All the organs have more than one meaning. Um, the scientific meaning of a, of a certain organ, like say the gallbladder, does not in any way come close to the entire picture that the gallbladder uh, is, is giving. I mean, you, all, you only have to look into traditional Chinese medicine to see other aspects of what the gallbladder is used for. You know, the, the ability to make a decision. You know, that comes from the gallbladder. You know, that largely, that emotion, uh, that that part of the emotional body is, is centered in the gallbladder. Not all of it, but a good part of it is. The ability to make a decision. Think about that. You let them yank it out. Um, yeah, I'm not real. I'm not a real fan of uh, of, of uh, well, anyway, you guys kind of get that point. Uh, if you have any questions, three uh, four seven nine three four zero zero two six. If you have questions about your uh, metabolism in general, I know that we have a few folks on the uh, on the uh, Yahoo group that that are having trouble with sleeping. That are um, you know, they're they're beginning to emerge into the other worlds, and it's scaring them to pieces. And so, what's happening is their metabolism is being uh, is being increased due to the to the levels of fear that they're allowing themselves to to experience. And I'm just going to say this again: surrender to the Kundalini. Use the word Kundalini. Surrender to the kundalini and have faith that you will not be hurt. You will not be harmed. Yes, you may experience new things. Yes, you may see new things. Yes, new things may come your way, but that's not necessarily bad. You don't get kundalini by accident. So trust it. It is a part of your evolution. It is not anything to be afraid of. If there are fears that are being injected into this process, it is happening from your ego, not from the kundalini. It's your ego's response to the kundalini. And, of course, that that war of, of, of wills, that the, the kundalini agenda versus the ego will. Uh, and the ego will will typically lose. And if it doesn't... If it doesn't uh, lose cleanly it will lose in, in, a, in a dirty way by just leaving a lot of fear and a lot of negativity uh, in its wake and I just want you to to relax breathe and if you're not being allowed to sleep then don't try to sleep don't push the Kundalini to you know to get into some areas of, of, of severe disruption within you which it will do if you keep trying to, to interrupt that agenda, you know, the, the kundalini is going to push itself harder into your system. And, you know, and then we get into areas of kundalini syndrome, you know, where the person is constantly uh, pushing the agenda and, uh, you know, their own ego agenda. And the kundalini is saying, well, honey, I think you've got some things to learn. And, and uh and the kundalini will really 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 begin to to unload itself in a way that allows you to learn that it's the kundalini that is in charge now not you not your mental self not your ego self it's the kundalini and the kundalini is what will be working your metabolism all the aspects of your metabolism you have to remember that Christian? yes may i interrupt you because we have debbie online and she'd like to ask a question Hi, Debbie. Hi. I'm sorry. I, I saw about the kundalini and metabolism, and I turn, tuned in a little late. But um, I'm, I'm wondering if people are having problems with their vision because I thought my glasses were bad or my blood sugar was bad. So I go to the eye doctor yesterday, and he told me it is a ocular migraine where my endocrine system is messing with my vision and then it goes right back normal do you have kundalini i believe so yes now what you have what would to make, uh, when i meditate i i uh vibrate you vibrate go ahead is, is that about like, it like no i go in like a little circle and beyond that i've been having uh you know spiritual phenomena happen 
I, I I think I've been in the process for a couple of years. All right. Well, uh, yeah. So so your 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 eye doctor, he doesn't know about Kundalini, so he can't really take that into consideration. What he'll tell you is the basic uh, uh, phenomena that they're used to seeing within. Uh, uh, you know, like an ocular migraine type of situation, uh, but yeah, yeah, the 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 Kundalini will have a direct effect on your vision because it has a direct effect on your in- endocrine system, okay? And your yes. endocrine system has a direct effect on your metabolism system. So it, it's all it's all connected in. And and so, what are you are you you're having a vision go and then it comes back? Is that it? Yes, it go, it goes blurry. And then I'll think I need new glasses, and I go, and then it's back normal. Well, now, and now does, it's very does it, is it like a, Is it? Yeah, I can imagine, especially when you're driving. Is it? Yeah. Is it uh, uh, where it just blurs out, like you have a really, really relaxed gaze, like you're gazing off into a sunset, and things kind of go fuzzy a little bit? Is it like that? Yeah, like I have to squint more, and. Um, and um, you know, someone said that was ascension symptoms. Another, you know, spiritual lady, but she didn't tell me anything beyond that. No, I mean, if you have Kundalini at all, then your whole life is one big ascension symptom. <laughs> so, right. You know, so yes, of course, the Kundalini does have a definite uh, uh, um, agenda here with with you having having this this symptom. Um, what I'm being, I'm, as I look at you, I'm getting uh, a visual of an eye, uh, and I'm I'm seeing keratin. Are you doing anything that? Uh, well, this is what I'm seeing. Uh, you need fresh pressed carrot juice every okay. day, and I mean, okay. you know, the fresh organic. Pre- where are you, where are you? What state are you in? Louisiana. I've lived all over though. Yeah, well, you might be able to get that in Louisiana. Oh yeah. yeah you, you may be able to get that. Uh, yeah, fresh pressed carrot juice. There's also an eyebright tea. Okay. Okay. Uh but most of all this is not something that you need to change your glasses for. Okay. This is not yeah, something he, that You told me I could uh, keep my glasses. I yeah, was like, yeah. "Oh, I thought he was going to say they got worse or better and yeah. Oh, no. I was shocked. No. I was shocked. No, no, no. This is this is basically the Kundalini sine wave activity going into your vision. Okay, so so the at the peak of the phenomena, your eyes go blurry, and then on the downside and into the valley, the eyes straighten up. Somewhere in between those two areas, uh, the Kundalini is it affects the eyes in spectacular ways. I mean. At a distance, you can go macro. Okay, so what I think uh, may be occurring for you is is your eyes are being uh, changed, transformed into into eyes that can see in many different ways. So, for instance, when I say macro, so you're sitting on a park bench, and there's another park bench, uh, you know, a few yards away. You see a fly land on the on the other park bench that's away from you, and you can zoom in really close okay and and but in order for that to occur the eye has to go through a new polaric balancing and i don't mean polaric as far as polaric energy i mean i mean going to the extended poles of of uh of how you see so so for instance if you if your if your uh, visual polarities are like you know one to five well, the Kundalini is extending them to negative ten to positive ten. Mm, okay. Your your horizons, your visual horizons, are being broadened, uh, and this also has the effect of, of of how your eyes are able to witness spiritual events as well. So, if mm-hmm. you know within the within the Kundalini context of your vision, uh, you your eyes can be conditioned may be conditioned in order to see spiritual phenomena at the same time that you see physical phenomena. This is what I have, okay? okay. Uh, it can be quite interesting to to see spiritual phenomena uh, as easily as you see physical phenomena. Um, 
not something I write about too much because you know it can be it can it will have a direct effect upon the reality matrix that a person has become used to but because you're meditating because uh, you 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 think you feel that you've been going through this for a while uh, I'm just going to give you a heads up that your eyes are being transformed by the kundalini you don't need new glasses. You don't need new glasses. You just need to accept this. This is not a permanent thing. I'd be very, very surprised to see this last more than six weeks. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, like many of the of the uh, kundalini phenomena, it will last a certain amount of time, and then it just goes away. Then the transformation okay. has been made. The transformation has been made, and it goes away. Okay, just okay. like Kriya. You don't get Kriyas for the rest of your life unless you're a very special person and you're having electrical Kriyas. Those those can last a much longer time period. But for you might just consider this uh, a uh, a retinal Kriya. I, I do affect electricity. Like if I'm mad, I can break it really easy or pop light bulbs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's lasted kind of a couple of years, though. That's okay. Uh, that's but, okay. But, but yeah, I mean, it's you know, that's not the phenomena that you really want to focus on. You want to focus on no, I don't. Yeah, you want to focus on your truth, on your love, and your service, and your compassion, and your trust, and your faith, and your your diligence of of of, uh, of surrender to the Kundalini. These are the areas that are the most important. Uh, to work on within a kundalini uh, evolutionary um, foundation. And, you know, I, I want to congratulate you for having the kundalini. It's, it's not a common thing. It may seem common these days on the Internet because the kundalini is becoming the new, uh, what would it be, the new Reiki or something like that. Oh. Um, no, it scared me. It happened uh, ten years ago when I started taking a healing class. And I would right. I would vibrate in a circle, and I purposely tried to shut it down by eating meat, anything dense. I mean, it was sure. still natural, but anything that would slow a vibration down because I was not ready for it mm -hmm. then. Obviously, you are now, though. So congratulations. Okay. <laughs> now, now Thank while, you. I have, while I have you on the phone, are there any other symptoms that you're concerned with that you'd like to talk about? Well, I went through a period where I heard bells ringing or telephones and that stopped. Like, I didn't realize that this would stop when you just said that, but I have had things that have stopped. And sure. um, I saw, like, a green arch going into my left arm. Mm -hmm. And that stopped. That lasted a couple weeks. That, now that you're saying that, that makes sense to me. Things that were kind of weird would stop. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. just like and half also, of a green rainbow. Every night it would be in my bathtub. <laughs> Well, there you go. That sounds like a very loving bathtub. Yeah. No, no. It was just the one side too, just the, the left arm, forearm. But with your, but with your eyes, be prepared to see more of the say the floating suns, or uh, entities, or uh, even emotional bands that surround a person. You know, auric viewing. Uh, okay. Kundalini, Kundalini will change those eyes, and when those eyes go unfocused, is when you can see the other, uh, the other uh, uh, oh. visions. Okay. It's yeah, I feel out of commission when that happens. Like I'm, forget it. I can't do anything. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe that's that's also something to consider. Maybe oh. that for that moment in time, you shouldn't be doing anything. Okay. Yeah, we can't. We don't really get to pick and choose how the Kundalini expresses its agenda upon us. Uh, that's where that's where the surrender comes. And when you first started ten years ago, when it first started to come to you, and you resisted it, you we were very lucky in the in the, in the sense that it decided that uh, it could wait a decade for you. It could wait. A I decade. I did a bunch of spiritual work, not knowing that that would happen. You know. Well, that's Might what a lot of people do. And, and and it's not a bad thing, Debbie. I have to tell you that that I think that you were probably being guided to do these things so that this would occur. Okay. Well, remember, this is this is a natural expression of the body. 
the kundalini knows your eyes better than any op- optometrist or ophthalmologist uh, would ever know. <laughs> okay, they don't know wow. what the kundalini knows. And the eye is a very, very special, special divine development. Uh, and, and you'll see that eyes are almost, in a, in a, in a very similar way, uh, universal throughout the world, even on fish. You know, eyes are very, very, very special. Uh, able to 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 be able to see is, is is an amazing gift. However, as your as your vision blurs, take note of what you're seeing in the okay. blur. Take note of what you're seeing in the blur. Nothing is wrong. Everything is right with you. Okay. Your ego may not your ego may not realize that it may not know that it may not even honor that that uh, that information, but it is it is a truthful statement. For you to have okay. kundalini, far more is going right than going wrong. Okay. Doesn't feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, yeah, yeah. thank you very much. You I just hope the endocrine system, calm, metabolism, all that calms down. It's so hypersensitive, you know. Well, no, it, 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 don't don't even go there. Just just accept it for as it needs to be at the time that it needs to be the way it is. Okay. Try not to control it. Accept it. Surrender to the grace within you. Surrender to that divine Debbie self. Surrender to her divinity because she knows a lot more about the body than you do. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you for calling in, Debbie. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, along the lines with with, with Debbie uh, and mentioning the endocrine system, well, the kundalini will often uh, affect the endocrine system first, which in turn, will have a direct effect on their metabolism. And as the endocrine system changes, the metabolism changes. As the metabolism changes, energetic requirements within the body change. And as those energetic requirements change, phenomena begin to change in the body. Now, Debbie brought up a really good point that I had not been covering yet, so I want to say thank you again to Debbie. Is that She brought up, you know, the, the active... Uh, change in 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 the retina of her eye and in, in the iris of her eye um, the ability to focus sharply goes away momentarily and then comes back and then this is how the kundalini changes things typically it will it will it will change things a little bit knowing that the person's going to be surprised and then it'll come back to normal then change it a little bit more, and then come back to normal. Then change it a little bit more, and then come back to normal. These changes are not being given just for the fun of it. You know, the kundalini isn't standing inside the person's head going, oh, this one's good for a laugh. Let's try this on Debbie. (laughs) Not at all. Uh, There's a very, very, very specific agenda of transformation being given into Debbie. And as I mentioned earlier, as we begin to walk in the two worlds, the physical and the spiritual, uh, there are certain organs of, of, uh, of, in this case, of sight that Debbie and other people are going to need as they, as they begin to walk and work their way into the spiritual world. It doesn't always work the way it does here. In the other, in the next world, you can see through touch. You can see through any part of the body. The eyes are conveyances of communication, not just vision. Okay. Uh, and, and God, that, that would take a whole other show for me to go into. Maybe we'll do that. To go into uh, how it is in the, in, the, in the second attention or the second world uh, with the Kundalini. Uh, a lot of you who are doing the OBE work, uh, you'll you'll you may have some uh, significant uh, response to that type of thing, and I know I know that uh, that that with regards to the second attention, there's there's a whole world. I mean, just there's a whole universe of of information to be given there, and I think that'll be good for another show. We'll consider that. Um, uh, 
So, so thank you, Debbie. Thank you for calling in. The number here is 347-934-0026. I have 20 minutes left. So if anybody would like to call in, uh, making a comment, tell me how how silly I am or how how, uh, how how maybe closer to the truth I may be for you, feel free to call in and say that. If you have a question, uh, feel free to call in, 347-934-0026. Uh, with regards to the changes that occur, uh, the sine wave is also the the symbol of the serpent the serpent is that squiggly line that has a peak in a valley and a peak in a valley and a peak in a valley this is often how the changes will occur so for debbie you know as you're going your 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 vision's getting getting uh, out of focus and then into focus out of focus and then into focus um, uh, another person uh, uh who may be like say amelia who's who's really you know burning the midnight coal shall we say within her within her body uh the, you know when that first begins you're only hot part of the time so you'll get a heat wave and you'll be going oh my gosh why am i having this heat flash you know and if uh if you're a woman you know and you're at menopausal age you'll go oh it, it must be menopause except now then now the cold flash comes <laughs> That's, that's not typically experienced, uh, you know, within the menopausal uh, experiences. And please correct me if I'm wrong, if, if that is the case. Uh, so it'll touch and go. It'll transform a little bit and then back off. Transform a little bit more and then back off. Transform more, more, more and back off. Letting us become acclimated to the changes. It's very important. To become acclimated to these changes. If we're not acclimated enough, then we're going to resist them. Our ego will resist them. And then, once again, we have that battle of the wills. The, the Kundalini ego uh, uh, versus the, or, I'm sorry, the, the, the ego agenda versus the Kundalini agenda. And that is always going to be a, a, a losing situation for the ego. Because even if the ego feels like it's winning, it's suffering so much that there is no winning. You know, it'll go straight to a, a pharmacist to try to get some sort of relief from, from you know, the headache or the pain that the kundalini may be giving it due to their resistance. So don't resist the kundalini changes. As it comes and backs off, comes and backs off, realize that, oh, this is the Kundalini serpent. You can even call it, you know, the Kundalini sine wave if you're afraid of snakes. Okay, the sine wave is occurring, and this will occur really for the rest of the life. This is not something. Even yeah, you know, yes, for Debbie, yes, that will, that will go away. But the 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 transformation that it is bringing doesn't go away. That exalted skill does not go away. You're going to hear a phone in the background. My apologies. Um, so take these changes in stride. Trust your kundalini. Trust and have faith in your kundalini. It is here to help. It is not there to hurt. You have no reason to be afraid of the kundalini or anything that it brings, whether it's discarnate entities or or messing around with your eyes, or messing around with your internal temperature, or messing around with the uh, with the uh, levels of of, uh, of energy that your body uses in the ways that it uses it, and, and co-opting them to use the energy in different ways for different transformational needs that the body has. You let the Kundalini do its work upon you. That that is. One of the main messages that 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 I've been trying to give through all of these conversations, you let the Kundalini do that work. Now I have uh, I have fifteen minutes. If anybody would like to call in, it is three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. And I'd like to say hello to uh, Texas Pearl. That's kind of a cool name. And Eileen and guests. Number two two six eight two four two eight two seven four nine four one eight eight four eight zero two four nine two zero and five zero seven four. Hello and thank you all for joining us uh, at, at this 
in this conversation here. And now, uh, Amelia, could you come on, please? If you're listening, here, let me bring you on here. There yes, we are. I'm here, Christian. Now, uh, do you do you have any more information about those possible seminars? Well, the plan is to have one here in Ireland again, not necessarily in Cork. We might do it again in Newgrange because that was a, a very nice venue, I feel, and it's a good it's a good venue as well from the perspective of people flying in. So I like Newgrange. perhaps New, New, there, yeah. Yeah, New, Newgrange was great. It I was, especially it was. So, the, the, the spiders in the hair, very nice. Very nice. <laughs> That was that was wonderful. So I'm thinking there um, in March, and um, and also in New York, in March. So well, I would invite me. people. Go ahead. To, sorry, cousin. I would invite people to to write to me if they would, if they have an interest in attending either of those in the New York area, in particular. Um, it's a big undertaking to organize, so I would appreciate some feedback um, if people are interested. Not a commitment to attend, but that you have an interest in attending and that you may possibly attend. Um, so that, that would be the, the place on the East Coast that I'd be looking at to organize it in March. Um, well, and Ireland as well. And if there's anywhere else, indeed, that people are interested in Quism giving a seminar, you can write to Kundalini Matters and, and let us know about that. Kundalini Matters at gmail.com, right? That's it, at gmail.com. Correct. Very good, very good. Well, Debbie, I would like to thank you for calling in. Rosemary, I would like to thank you for letting me just cut in on your on your easy listening time. Everybody who has who has uh, come into the chat room, thank you for joining us uh, with this uh, conversation. And uh, for those of you who are listening into the, into, in the archives, many blessings to you. I am going to, to sign off this conversation, and, and uh, thank you all for listening. Bye, Amelia. Bye, Chris, and goodbye, everyone.